So this is the brand new Zhiyun Crane M3 gimbal. Would you just look how small this thing is? But don't let that fool you because this thing can still hold quite a payload. So in today's video, we're going to take this thing outside. We're going to just see how good it really is. We're also going to go through some of the features and the settings that this gimbal has and all the accessories that it might come with depending on which kit you buy. And then by the end of the video, I'm going to tell you why I think this gimbal is going to be one of the best gimbals for smaller cameras, as well as some of the smaller full frame setups. So before we go outside and do some of the tests, let's check out what this thing actually comes with. So one thing I do want to mention real quick is that Zhiyun did send me this kit. Uh, they're not paying me for this video. They're not sponsoring this video. They're not even going to see this video before I post it. So this is going to be my honest review of this gimbal. Okay, so the kit that Zhiyun sent me is this Crane M3 Pro kit. Uh, this kit is going to come with the backpack, the microphone, cables, uh, cell phone mount, the tripod extension, and like a control module that you can kind of sit between the gimbal and the tripod extension. So this kit has pretty much everything that you're going to get. This is the most expensive kit, but they do make three options for this kit. So you can check down below which one would fit your needs the best. So in this kit, you're going to get this nice little backpack. Uh, it comes with everything that you can need to store the gimbal, a camera, uh, the microphone, a bunch of accessories. There are straps so you can carry this thing like a backpack or even just like a handbag. I'm not sure if this is something I will use because I'm not really into small little white backpacks. But this thing is a really nice durable backpack. It does feel like it's quite a bit of quality. Uh, inside you're going to find the microphone kit, the tripod extension, all the accessories that go with this thing, uh, as well as all the connection cables. As you can see, it kind of opens up like a, like a little bit of a camera bag pouch and you can store all the stuff inside. But for me, I have like two or three different camera bags, so I'm probably going to stick with those. Uh, but that's one of the nice things about this gimbal, that this thing still fits really nicely in a backpack, which a lot of other gimbals just don't do. Let's see it again in super slow motion. I don't think we need to see that again. All right, let's see that again. So with the standard kit, what you're going to get is you're going to get the gimbal itself, the little tripod extension that you can screw onto the bottom if you want to make this thing a bigger gimbal, uh, which is also nice because you can just have a little bit more grip on it, but also you can set it down on tables like easier and have it to stand up. So then you're going to get a bag of cables for connection of the camera to the gimbal so that you can control the camera with the gimbal. Uh, and that works on most cameras. There are a couple cameras that it doesn't. So, so if you go check out their website, there is a whole list of different cameras that work with this gimbal that you can use to control with the buttons on the outside. Uh, and then inside you're going to get four different little uh, gel packs for the light because there is a built-in light that's on here. We'll kind of go over that in a minute. Uh, but you can do these, you can just stick them on magnetic. Uh, so there's like a red, orange, yellow, and blue. And then lastly on the standard kit, you're gonna get kind of a styrofoam case. Uh, I don't think it's a necessarily a carrying case, but I haven't actually seen that one. So, but it looks like it's just kind of a case that it comes in. Uh, and then that whole standard kit starts at like $369, uh, depending on when you watch this video. So then the next one up is the combo kit. What you're gonna get with that is everything I just said, plus the backpack, and then also like a metal cell phone bracket you can use to mount your cell phone to the gimbal. And that set is gonna go for $449, also depending on when you see this video. So that just leaves us with the Pro Kit. And with that kit, you're gonna get all of this stuff, plus you're gonna get the shotgun microphone with this cable. Uh, this is a cardioid and a hypercardioid microphone. Uh, and then you're gonna get this little base plate that actually sits between the tripod and the gimbal itself. What this is, is it's gonna allow you to plug in your microphone on the front, have it run through your gimbal and connect to your camera so that you can use this microphone. And it does look like there is one more feature on here that I'm not sure if it's out yet, but it's the camera control module. And it looks like what they're gonna do is that they're gonna have some kind of wireless camera control module that you can hook to this and then hook straight to your camera so you don't have to use any wires. Uh, that's currently not out. I don't know much more about that other than that. Let's put this thing on. So all you do is you just hook this thing on the bottom. So after you have this installed, all you need to do is plug in your microphone, plug in the audio connection cable from the top of the gimbal to your camera. And now you're ready to go out to the beach or wherever and do like interview style stuff. I imagine this is gonna be something that would become really useful when you're going to like events or things like CES or Comic Cons, where you wanna go out and interview people and have someone hold the camera and have it be steady. So this is gonna be a really nice kit. Uh, is it necessary for a gimbal kit? No, but if you do want a microphone that this, then you're gonna to wanna to look at the Pro Kit. So one of the features I like most about this gimbal is the fact that it's just really small and really light. In fact, it really doesn't weigh much more than these like handheld tripods. So if you normally walk around vlogging with your little handheld tripod, this thing isn't really gonna feel a whole lot different. It's just going to be really steady. So you can just either turn this thing completely around or you can just hit the button which has selfie mode if you click it three times 
now you can just walk around and vlog and quite honestly, not having this be this huge gimbal that you're carrying around, it's gonna not draw a lot of attention to yourself. So you're not gonna look strange walking around vlogging. Yeah, this is going to make this thing really nice for traveling. So if you guys are traveling, highly recommend taking a peek at this because this is going to be an excellent gimbal for just walking around, having something small that's still gonna hold quite a bit of weight. So as far as carrying payload on this gimbal, this thing will hold something as light as a GoPro and a cell phone, all the way up to my like Sony a7S III with like my Sony 20 millimeter lens or a Tamron 17 to 28. I actually have balanced my uh, Tamron 28 to 200, but I wouldn't recommend trying to do that a whole lot because the gimbal at some point will just not like it and it'll shut off. Uh, but it did actually balance that lens. That lens stuck out quite a ways and it was a pretty heavy lens, so. But what we have on here is the Sony ZV-E10 with the Sigma 16. Now, if anyone has the setup, you'll know that this lens is kind of a front heavy lens. It's not a light lens, uh, but this thing is doing just fine on here. In fact, this is probably my absolute go-to setup now is the ZV-E10 with the Sigma 16 on this little gimbal. And you're gonna get great footage you don't need to use the active stabilization that's on this camera, which crops in like 40%. Uh, in fact, I wouldn't use any stabilization when you're flying on a gimbal. Just turn that completely off. Uh, and now you're gonna get a really good look, 16 millimeter, you're gonna walk around. It's gonna look very useful and very good for like vlogging. So as far as the lenses I was able to use on the ZV-E10, uh, I was able to use the kit lens, the Sigma 16, the 30, the 56, and I was even able to use the Sony 18 to 105, which is still kind of a large lens and it's definitely front heavy but this gimbal held it no problem. On that lens, it actually didn't balance. Uh, it did lean forward quite a bit, but the motors are strong enough that it still didn't matter. It turned on and it lifted it up and it worked just fine. All right, so now we're gonna go take this thing outside. We're gonna give it a walking test. We're gonna give it the running test. And then we're gonna go to a snow tubing hill and give it that test, whatever that is you would call. I don't know, snow tube test? Okay, let's go check that out. Okay, so this is a walking test on the ZV-E10 with the Sigma 16 and we're using the Korean M3. So far, it's looking pretty darn smooth to me. Um, this thing is not heavy at all, and I think it's a good gimbal, and if you know how to control it, it turns pretty well with your arm. And when you're using this gimbal, it means you don't have to use active stabilization, so you actually will get a good shot of yourself instead of it being like zoomed in like this, like that active stabilization does. So I think this is going to be probably the best option for you guys who are using the ZV-E10, uh, and especially with something like the Sigma 16, which isn't stabilized at all, so. So let's give it the aggressive test. Let's start walking really fast and just see if that changes anything. Normally I would never recommend walking really fast when vlogging because it's always gonna be shaky. But I think this gimbal is gonna be great for that as well. Okay, so let's do like a running test now. Uh, this is a, something that you probably never will be doing with vlogging, but let's just see what it looks like anyways, see how smooth this gimbal can be. So this is pretty much a full speed run at this point. Okay, don't know what that actually looked like because I wasn't watching too much, but well, hopefully this will look good in post. All right, so the ZV-E10 is now off the gimbal. We're gonna do just a stabilization test, walking without the gimbal, without stabilization. So this is the Sigma 16 with the ZV-E10 without stabilization. I'm holding it with a tripod extension below the camera, trying to walk as careful as I can. I can already tell I can look at this screen right now. It looks pretty shaky, but that's just kind of what the Sigma 16 is like. It's an unstabilized lens and you're gonna get some shake out of it. Uh, just for comparison also, let's check the active stabilization on this. Okay, so now we're in active stabilization uh, off the gimbal. As you can see, this thing cropped in quite a bit. Uh, and this is just what the stabilization looks like with active stabilization in the Sigma 16. Uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna look shaky or not, but this is what it looks like. Okay, so here's a quick side-by-side. -side. On the left, we have the gimbal. On the right, there's no gimbal. As you can see, the right side is very shaky. The left is very smooth.
Okay, so we're here, we're gonna test out the new Crane M3 while we're on this tubing hill at Buck Hill. Uh, first up, we're gonna try the ZV-E10 and the Sigma-16. <laughs> oh, that was so fast. The tube kept spinning, so I was trying to keep it aimed on you, but it wasn't working. Okay, so we're using the Crane M3 now on the A7S3. Uh, this gimbal is getting really cold, so it's kind of struggling now to keep everything working well. Uh, we're going to try using this on this run. Uh, maybe should, should I put it in slow mo for this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. We'll do yeah. the slow mo. All right, it feels good to be back inside. So let's talk about that walking test. That looked great. I thought that was perfectly smooth, perfectly steady. Personally, I kind of don't want to vlog again without this gimbal using this camera. Uh, this is not a stabilized lens, like I said. So that side to side footage of the camera without the gimbal, that just looked terrible. Uh, and then when I popped that thing into active stabilization, it was just, it was just way too close to me, made the background disappear. It wasn't great. But using this thing made that gimbal walk look great. Uh, I think this is a perfect solution for like vlogging, traveling, things like that, because it's going to be very smooth, uh, even though this is still a front heavy setup. Now, as far as that running test was concerned, that looked great. I thought it didn't get much motion at all, but yeah, I'm, I'm quite surprised on how well this gimbal actually performs holding kind of bigger setups. So now looking at the front of the gimbal, you'll see that there's a joystick, there's a menu button, there's a record button, and then there's a touch screen. And on the touch screen, you have a mode dial, a balance, info, and settings. So if you click mode, you can scroll through pan follow, lock, follow, POV, go mode, which is for fast movements, vortex, and portrait, which will be for vertical video. But on the front, you do have a mode button, which will actually scroll through pan follow, lock mode, and follow mode. So on the top right, you're gonna see a button that says balance. So if you open that up, it's gonna show you a live view of your tilt, your roll and your pan and how it's reacting with your motors. Uh, you don't really need to look at that, but it does help to see if your gimbal's struggling or not. So the info button's gonna show you like languages and device info. So the bottom right, you're gonna see a button called settings. So if you open that up, it's gonna bring up a menu and that's gonna have like your auto calibration. So once you get your camera balanced, you actually can just hit that. It's gonna shake the camera all around. It's gonna find the best modes for the motors as far as strength and motor torque. So in parameter settings, you're going to see a list that's going to show uh, motor torque, smoothness, follow speed, joystick speed in your dead band. Uh, if you click motor torque, it's going to show you low, medium, and high. 
So if you're running a camera like the ZV-1 and it's not really heavy, you're gonna wanna turn that to low because otherwise the motors are gonna try to overdo for that camera. And if you're running a really heavy setup, you're gonna wanna click high because you want the motors to have the most torque it has. Uh, below that, you're gonna see smoothness. So if you wanna be like extra super cinematic smooth, click high and it'll make your gimbal movements more slow and less reactive to how you're moving the camera. Uh, follow speed is going to be the same thing. It's how quick the gimbal is going to be. I tend to leave mine at medium. Joystick speed is just kind of if you want to turn your, your joystick, how fast you want that to turn. Uh, I kind of just leave that alone because I don't use the joystick a whole lot anyways. So there's a control wheel setting and on that you can click that. Uh, and if you turn on roll control, the roll knob on the front will actually control the roll axis of your camera. So if you want to manually do some cool rolls, you can do that with that. And then last in the menu, there's a fine tuning. So that's if your gimbal likes to just lean a little bit one way and it's not balancing, you can hit fine tune and calibrate that so it's correct. So on the front of the gimbal, you're gonna see there's a little trigger. So now if you hold that trigger down, it's gonna make your gimbal a lot more fast. It's gonna put it into that go mode. So if you need fast action movements, you can do that. Uh, and then if you double click the gimbal, it's always going to reset back to its default position. If you triple click the button, it's going to bring it into a selfie mode. So inside of the gimbal here, you're gonna see a quick charge port, which is a USB-C cable. Uh, charges fully in about two hours and should last about eight hours of normal use. So on the other side, you're gonna see another quarter inch expansion port. So if you wanna connect like a hot shoe, cold shoe or an extension, if you wanna hold a monitor or another microphone, you can add that right there. And then on the side here, you'll see this is the dial for the light on the front. So if you just hold that dial down, it's going to turn on the light. It's gonna give you control as far as brightness from 10 all the way up to 100. 100 gets quite bright. So if you tap that button again, it's gonna give you a different temperature control all the way from 2600 all the way to 5400. So if you need a little bit of extra light, if you're outdoors at nighttime, or just need a little bit touch more light as a key light, you can use this and it works quite well. So setting up and balancing the gimbal got really easy because on every one of the access, they have a lock now. So you can lock all the access so it's stiff, you can open one lock, balance that joint, lock it, move on to the next one, unlock it, so on, so on, until you have it balanced. This makes it way easier to balance and not have to fumble around with the thing moving while you're trying to balance it. Uh, in fact, it only takes like 30 seconds to do that. So I'll be putting out another video to show how to set up and balance this gimbal for different cameras. Uh, so if you wanna check that out, go ahead and subscribe down below and follow along. So that leads us to one of the coolest features on this camera, and that is how this camera actually connects to the gimbal. So on the back of the gimbal, you'll see that there's a little slider dial and a red button. All you have to do to take this camera off is open that slider, hit that red button, and now your camera just completely comes off. So when you buy this kit, it's gonna come with a universal bracket that you just mount to the bottom of the camera, uh, and then it's going to slide into that mount. One of the downsides to this is that it's kind of a wide bracket and it will kind of cover your battery door on most cameras. So you do have to remove this to get to your battery. And also it's not like an Arca Swiss plate or anything like that. Uh, I wish it was kind of an Arca Swiss plate because all my other mounts that I have on my tripods and everything are Arca Swiss. Uh, but that's something maybe we'll have to wait till a third party company comes out with some kind of quick connection or not. So Zhi Wen does have available other brackets that are actually meant for specific cameras. And then it replaces the little arm that comes on the gimbal as well. And that's actually gonna be quite a bit of a smaller bracket. It won't cover the battery doors. And then you can connect your specific camera to the gimbal and you won't have to worry about balancing all the time because it should help balance it as well. So now to put this camera back on, all you have to do is slide that bracket back open and then literally push your camera on and it's back on again. So it's super easy to set up. All right, so as far as the pros, the obvious is it's small, it's compact, it's light. Uh, I'm gonna use this a lot more often just because I can put it in my camera bag. I do have other better gimbals, but they don't get used a lot because honestly, they're just a pain to put in camera bags. So having something that I can store with me all the time is gonna make me wanna use it a lot more. That's a big plus for this gimbal is the fact that you're gonna use it a lot more. So it's not gonna just collect dust on your shelf looking cool. Pro number two, it does have the quick release plate so you can take the camera off the gimbal quite easy. It has all the locks on the axis so it's simple to balance. And pro number three, it has the connections that I can connect my camera straight to the gimbal and control from the gimbal. And pro number three, it has all the connections on the top of the gimbal that I can connect the camera straight to the gimbal and just control with the gimbal. That makes this thing quite nice. All right, now because no gimbal is perfect, let's talk about the cons or just the things that I didn't really like about this gimbal. Uh, so first glaring obvious one to me is this quick release plate. And yes, it's super easy to take off and put back on, which is awesome. But this plate is very proprietary to this setup, which means I have to take this off every time I go to my Arca Swiss plates or my other quick release plates for other things because all my tripods, mounts, backpack straps, everything uses Arca Swiss plates. 
So I wish this had some kind of compatibility to Arca Swiss plate. Uh, and yes, people are gonna say you could put a plate on top, but really then it raises the camera up too high and it's gonna hit the eyepiece. It's not something you wanna do. And like I said before, they do have other plates that are meant for specific cameras, which will leave the battery doors a little bit more accessible. But I just wish this was something that was more compatible with the other setups I have. Now, if you aren't using Arca Swiss plates or anything else, then this is gonna be fine and it's not really a con. In fact, it's quite nice to be able to set this thing in and snap it in. So the second thing that I found that I didn't really like about this gimbal is the fact that there are fixed batteries in this gimbal, which means you can't take the batteries out and replace them. So if you're planning on using this thing less than eight hours a day, that's fine. You can charge this thing and it's gonna work just great. But if you plan on using this for like an all day event, uh, you're gonna have to charge this halfway through the day because you can't swap batteries. And I like just carrying batteries with me so I can pop new ones in and be on my way for another eight hours. That's not really like a deal breaker to me, but it is something that I like personally having so you don't have to charge midday. So now the third thing, I really can't complain about this one too much, but I wish it could hold slightly bigger lenses. Um, but I understand that this is a compact gimbal meant for more of a setup of like ZV-E10 and A6400s, but it would be kind of cool to be able to balance that like, I don't know, Sigma 24 to 70 on this. That's something maybe in the next edition, maybe they'll be able to handle even bigger lenses. We'll see. Okay, so the last thing I noticed with this gimbal is that when I took this thing outside in negative 10 degree weather in Minnesota, the motors on this thing kind of struggled a little bit. It wasn't as responsive as it should have been. And I noticed that it kind of wanted to sag a little bit on the roll axis. Uh, but honestly, I think I would have taken any gimbal out there and it would have done the same thing. So I can't really say it's the gimbal, but if you're trying to use this thing out in like negative 10 degree temperatures, it's going to struggle a little bit. And also that battery life kind of deteriorated pretty quick. But honestly, that's just gonna be something I think happens with electronics out in severe temperatures. In fact, this camera was struggling as well. I could see on the screen that it was getting very flickery and it wasn't moving great. So I think I was just at the point where the electronics were just too cold to be outside. And since I've only had this gimbal for about a month, I just haven't had the opportunity to go out in warm weather. So I imagine this thing works perfect outside in normal temperatures. All right, you guys, before I get to my final thoughts on this gimbal, I just want to thank you guys for sticking around this late into the video. Uh, it means a lot to me that you guys are supporting this channel. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Keep following along with us. Okay, so my final thought on this gimbal now is that this is the absolute perfect gimbal if you want to travel with it, if you want to vlog with it, uh, if you're carrying these smaller setups like the ZV-E10 or even like A7S III if you're using smaller lenses, this is the perfect gimbal for you. My A7S III, it does have active stabilization and it does work quite well. It looks good for B-roll, but honestly using this gimbal with it made that thing look perfect. Now, same thing with the ZV-E10. Uh, this thing makes using the Sigma 16 lens a dream. Like using this lens on this camera, if you're not using active stabilization, it just looks bad. It, it's not a good camera to walk around with. But now that I have this gimbal, it's gonna make the Sigma 16 and ZV-E10 combo just perfect. Like I love this setup. All right, you guys, by the way, I was using the Rode Wireless Go when I was doing those walking tests, but I was actually using the Rode Video Micro before, and this thing still balanced quite well, even with that microphone on top. So you can still use your Rode Video Micro on top of this gimbal and have it be balanced. So if you guys are looking for a compact gimbal that's gonna hold anything from like a GoPro all the way up to like an A7S III, highly recommend taking a look at this, and picking one of these up. Uh, if you aren't looking for the microphone and all the extra stuff, just stick with that standard kit. Uh, your guys are gonna love this thing. So personally, this is going in my backpack and I'm gonna use this quite a bit. All right, so if you have any questions on this Crane M3, please leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, if you hit that subscribe button, I would love that. And as always, you guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.